In this video, we're leaving the island of Oahu and we're flying to the big island for three days of adventure and sights. We're on an 8.15 a.m. flight on Hawaiian Airlines. And look at these amazing views on the left side of the plane. Welcome to Kona International Airport. We've picked up our rental car and now it's time to find breakfast. The road has brought us to Kailua, Kona and Humphrey's Big Island Alehouse. The sign outside said best breakfast and we got an amazing table. Look at this view. We got the omelet and toast and the breakfast potatoes and the Hawaiian French toast which has the Hawaiian bread from the Unalu'u Bakery, which we're going to go to next. Our focus today, and why you clicked on this video, is Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The drive to the park will take us around the southern side of the island, and over two hours to complete. Kona being world famous for coffee, one of the popular things to do is stop at the various coffee farms and plantations and uh, cafes to sample Kona coffee as you make your drive south. Unfortunately, we won't have time for that. And that's really because we have one planned stop in the itinerary before we make it to Volcanoes National Park, and that is visiting the Punalu'u Bake Shop, which is dubbed the southernmost bakery in all of the United States. When you get there, there are two lines. The line in front is for sandwiches and the line in the back is for pastries. Make sure you know which line you're joining. We joined the pastry line, which included a variety of malasadas, uh, some pies, some cake, some apple turnovers, some cocoa puffs, and a few donuts. About an hour later, we arrived at the welcome sign for Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And just some random information, the park is open 24 hours a day, though some areas are closed due to active eruptions. It costs $30 per vehicle to enter the park, $15 if you're a pedestrian or on a bicycle, $25 on a motorcycle, and it's encouraged to buy your ticket online, recreation.gov. Uh, as to make this line go a little bit faster, the pass is valid for seven days. Our first stop is just near the visitor center and it's the Ha'akulamanu, which are the sulfur banks or steam vents. There is a 1.2 mile hike that you can do to see the various steam vents in the area. Uh, not something we had planned to do, but we definitely stopped in the parking lot. There are actually two of them in the parking lot that you can quickly stop and see as you continue your trek around the park. Our next stop is a very popular one right now, and that is the Kilauea Caldera, which is an active volcanic eruption right now. It's really a perfect place to see the smoke coming out of the crater. Uh, there was a tour group there while we were there and we heard the tour guide uh, say that the um, it's a lot higher as you can see it's a lot higher than it used to be all that magma uh, lava now has uh, come up to the top now during the daytime you're not going to see any of the burning lava but if you come back at night you have a bit of a show Ue Kahuna Bluff provides a clifftop view of the Kilauea volcano. This area recently reopened after the deadly 2018 eruption. So it's now 2.10 in the afternoon. We found the parking lot for the Kilauea Iki Trail. And this is going to be our one and really only trail that we're going to do at Volcanoes National Park. We're going to hike down to the actual crater of Kilauea Iki and walk not really across it but well let me tell you so this is the trail down to the crater floor 
Now round trip, it's four miles uh, down to the crater floor, across the crater, and then back up. Uh, that could take about two to three hours. We don't really have two to three hours. So what we're going to do is we've picked one side of the hike, of the trail, and we're going to walk down. It's 1.2 miles to the crater floor. We're going to walk down to the crater floor. We're going to be on the crater floor for a little bit. I don't know how far we're going to walk on the crater floor, but we're not going all the way. We're going to walk a little bit, experience it, and then turn around and come back up. So instead of it being a four mile hike, it'll be closer to like a two mile hike or just over two, mi two miles. So instead of, you know, two, three hours, if we can get it done in like an hour, hour 15, hour 20, um, that's pretty good. Um, we didn't arrive at Volcanoes National Park until closer to like 1.30. Uh, so we want to try and see as much as we can. This was really the only hike we wanted to do. So we're going to do it, experience it. Maybe check out the lava tubes, drive down to see the uh, sea arch. And then it's probably going to be dark at that point and that'll be the end of our trip. But we'll show you the uh, bottom of the crater once we get there. Okay, so it's been probably, I don't know, half hour, 20 minutes, and we made it to the crater. Do need to be careful to, I want to say stay on a trail, but there really isn't a trail at this point. But you want to be careful where you step because there are holes, there are cracks, there are things that you can fall into and get injured. I lost Sierra, she's somewhere back there in that group. I think she's joined them. I think we'll make it down to that flat area over there. Just a side note, you need to have uh, good hiking shoes for this, or shoes with good grip. Um, I've already seen one person, and it's raining by the way, or drizzling here around the crater floor. Um, but you do want to have good, good shoes in case it's wet. I've already seen one person slip and fall into themselves. So. Sierra is busy taking pictures over there in the pink. Um, but I think we're going to go probably a little bit more and then that'll be it. Okay, so we made it to the middle. We walked around the crater for a bit, took some pictures, took some video, ate some Doritos. And now it is 3.24. We will turn around and make our way back up toward the Thurston lava tubes and we'll see how long it takes us to get back to the uh, to the overlook where the car is. This is cool. Definitely recommend if you're coming to Volcano National Park, do this hike. I'll put the information right now on screen. Do the whole thing if you can. If you have the time, do the full four, four mile hike across and then up. But if you can't, go halfway and then turn around and go back it's still pretty cool <laughs> you know this reminds me of uh, the smoke monster <laughs> on lost <laughs> and we've made it back to the top it is now four o'clock so i believe the whole thing including all the stops to take pictures and whatever hour and a half hour and a half to hike it down walk around take pictures come back up yeah. okay. hour and a half 2 30 to 4. Yeah. okay now the, the lava tubes are that way we're gonna go check them out the one odd thing i i want to mention is the fluctuation in temperature so i don't know if it's just today or if this is normal but since we've been at Volcanoes National Park, the temperature fluctuation has gone from 80 to 67. There are points where you're freezing because it's cold and it's windy. And then there are moments like now where you're, you're not, you're pretty warm. So just keep that in mind, have 
a sweater or a hoodie or something that you, yeah, that you can take on and take off when needed. Uh, like on the crater floor, it was cold. Up here, walk into the lava tubes, it's warm. So keep that in mind. Again, I've seen in the car 80 and I've seen in the car 67. All within the past like three hours since we've been here. Keep that in mind. Okay, and we made it through the lava tube. Now, in video, it's kind of, it's not that exciting. I mean, I don't think it's one of, one of those experiences where it really comes off well on YouTube or the video, but walking through the tunnel was pretty cool. I mean, it was an experience, and I would say it was definitely worth it. I'm happy we did it. Of course, it's too dark to take any video or pictures, but just knowing that you're walking through something that takes about a minute, where lava had just flowed right through. It was cool. So if you're here, spend the five minutes it takes to get there and walk it and do it. You agree? Agreed. Okay. Chain of Craters Road is one of the more spectacular drives in the U.S. There are four different volcanic craters along the road. This is one of them. There's a hike in the park called Devastation Trail. This is not it, but as you drive down the chain of craters road, this is a perfect place to stop and really admire and appreciate the devastation of these volcanic eruptions. All you can see is just lava, lava that's cooled over I'm not quite sure how many years. But it's really just an amazing sight. You kind of forget that you're on Earth and not some alien world. The time is now 5.30 and we've made it to the end of the road where we can find the sea arch. Now the road really ends here. There are some porta potties, but at this point you have to turn around and make your way back up to the visitor center. But you can see the sea arch, assuming that it's still there. The sea arch actually, uh, a few days before we arrived, there were uh, storms off the coast of the big island and part of the sea arch did break. So uh, the sea arch, they do expect that one day it will just disappear. It will break off into the ocean and it's actually it's kind of started. So there were a few people there waiting to see, hey, maybe this will be the time it breaks. I don't know. It's getting close to 6 p.m. and we need to complete the 90 minute drive back to the Kona side of the island where our hotel is. But before we do that, because we're really close to Hilo, we're going to stop in Hilo and have some dinner. And that brings us to the very popular Cafe Pesto. We don't have reservations and the restaurant looks full, so hopefully they could fit us. And luckily there was one table available they could seat us at, though we had a plant next to us the entire time. This is the seafood medley, which features grilled fish, jumbo shrimp, and roasted pepper crab risotto. My husband says it was the best meal he's had in Hawaii so far. And I had the island fish, which was mahi-mahi, served with jasmine rice, miso vinaigrette, basil, truffle, arugula, and tomato. That concludes our first and very long day on the big island. Look out for our next video as we summit Mauna Kea. Mm -hmm.